Greetings, M squared here. Today we're going to review graphing absolute value functions, and then we're, our real focus is can we find the rate of change over a specified interval. So let's review a little bit about graphing absolute value functions, because we can't do anything until we graph them. So um, there's an easy way and a hard way. There's a slow way and a fast way. <laughs> Depends on how you want to do it. Um, but we're going to talk about that later. First, we're going to find the slope of the different sides. So as you remember from class, an absolute value function is a piecewise function. It's kind of like two lines. So this line is graphed from this point, um, these, uh, these x values, x is less than 4. And then this line is graphed, x is greater than 4. So it's kind of like two lines put together, two parts of lines, I should say, because it doesn't continue on like that. So it makes a v, because it's two parts of a line. So when we want to find the slope, we pick two points. We want to make sure we pick points that are on the grid lines, right? So pick two points on the line. So I'm going to pick two points on this line. This is the right side. Since I picked those, I'll do the right side first. So we're going to pick, we're going to pick two points. We're going to count up and over. Remember, up and over tells me my slope. So up, if it's positive, down is negative. Right is positive, left is negative. Hopefully you remember that from linear equations. And then you're going to repeat the same thing on the left side. So since I already picked the dots on the right side, I see that from this dot to this dot, I would go up 2 and over 1. So the up goes on the top. Since up, up is positive, so it's positive. And right is positive. So the slope on the right side of the absolute value is 2. So it doesn't matter which two points you pick. It's going to be the same. Um, because it's a line, and a line always has a constant rate of change. Remember, rate of change is another name for slope. So in this one, I'm going to go down to right one. Down is negative, so I have to put a negative. So the slope of that is negative 2. So we're just going to discover some things about these two graphs, and then we'll talk about graphing them and doing this also. So the domain, you'll remember, is all the possible, all the possible x values. So what you ask yourself for domain is, does it go left and right forever? And if not, then you have to say, hey, well, where does it stop going to the left and where does it stop going to the right? Got to find all the possibilities. Well, since this is an arrow going to the left and this is an arrow going to the right, I know that my domain is all real numbers because there's never a time where it stops going left or stops going right. The range is all about up and down. Does it go up and down forever? Well, my arrows go up forever, but they stop right here. They don't go down forever. So the lowest point I see is negative 4. Remember, this is about y. So I say y is greater than or equal to negative 4 because it starts at negative 4 and it goes up forever. My vertex is the turning point of the parabola, so I just need to find those coordinates. It looks like 4, negative 4. Remember, the x value goes first, so we go 4, negative 4. And then my axis of symmetry is the line that goes down through the vertex. It's a vertical line when absolute values are like this. And so vertical lines always have an x and only an x. And so we'd say x equals 4, because that line right there is x equals 4. OK, let's try it in this one. So we'll notice that this parabola is upside down. So what's this on the left side? Well, pick this point. Pick this point. Remember, you want a point where it crosses the grid. It doesn't cross the grid marks here. But here and here it does. So that means up 3 over 1. Up 3 over 1 will be 3. On the right side, if I pick this point and this point, it's down 3, right 1. So that's going to be a negative 3. My domain, since the arrows go left and right forever, again, is all real numbers. My range does not go up forever. The highest point is negative 2, and then it goes down forever. So I'd say y is less than or equal to negative 2, because it goes down forever from that point. The vertex is right there. That would be 0, negative 2. And then the axis of symmetry is the line, the vertical line that goes through the vertex. And so it's basically, if you notice from this one, that was 4, and this was 4. That's 0. This is 0. So x equals 0 is that line. It's always going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. That's the axis of symmetry. x equals whatever that is. OK. So now we're going to talk about graphing the hard way and the easy way. So I don't know, go, coming back to this, I don't know if you noticed, but the slopes are opposites, right? If one side is negative 2, the other side is positive 2. If one side is 3, the other side is negative 3. So if you know that, 
it makes it much easier to graph the absolute value because if you find the vertex then basically we're just counting up and over the slope on both sides. You'll notice that when the slope was um, opening up the left side was negative coming down and then the right side went up and when it was upside down the left side went up was increasing and the right side was decreasing. So that those little bits of information can make it easier. So this is the hard way. The hard way is just noticing that I have a one half and uh, absolute value of x and so I know my vertex is at zero zero because when I put a zero in I get a zero out. The absolute value of zero is zero times a half is zero. And when I have a half out there, if I'm going to use a table, I like to do even numbers because I know they'll be divisible by two. I can take half of even numbers without like a, a decimal. So I'd say negative four, negative two, two, and four. And then I put the absolute value, the negative four, or whatever these numbers in for x and solve it out. So one half of the absolute value of negative four, one half of four is two. And then I put a negative two in the absolute value sign and it's just asking me how far is, remember absolute value means how far is the number from zero. Negative two is two away from zero and half of two is one. And half of, and I put two in, I get one. I put four in, I get two. Okay, so we did all that, and then we come over here and graph it. We would graph those points, negative four, two, negative two, one, zero, zero. That's one way to do it. That's the kind of longer version. But if we recognize, hey, that is opening up, so I know it's gonna come down and then go back up, and I know my vertex is at zero, zero, because there's nothing inside here and there's nothing outside there. These are the basic ones. We're gonna talk about shifting left and right and up and down later. And I know the slope is one half on one side and negative one half on the other side. And since it opens up, it goes like this. So I know I go up one over two, up one over two. I know it's gonna go up there and then up one left two over here. And I have just graphed it using slopes and understanding what it looks like. I knew it opened up. So these are the same points that I just made in my table, 4, 2, right? I go over 4, up 2. But I did it much quicker because I recognized it was an absolute value, which makes a V. It's A is positive. This number is positive, so it opens up. The 1 half tells me my slope. So now let's answer some questions about that graph see if I can get that all on the page. What is the slope of the left side? Well, we should know that right here. Left side's going down, right? It's negative one half. What is the slope of the right side? The opposite of the left side. What's the vertex? Zero, zero, that's the turning point. What is the domain? Well, it goes left forever and right forever, so that's all real numbers. Um, is the graph reflected over the x-axis? No, it's not because A was no, because A was positive. A was greater than zero, so we know it wasn't reflected. Was it vertically stretched or compressed? It was vertically compressed. It's compressed when that's w uh, when this number is uh, between zero and one, and that is between zero and one. What is the axis of symmetry? It's x equals zero, remember? Whatever that x value is. And what is the range? Well, it's y is greater than or equal to zero because my vertex was right here. That's the lowest y value, and then it goes up forever. Okay, so let's try this one without making a chart. Let's just use our slopes. What do we know? We always want to notice the graph first. It's absolute value, I know it's a v. It's a three, I know it's stretched, and I know my slope is three. It's negative, so I know it's upside down. So I know it's gonna look something like that. It's not shifted, so I know my vertex is zero, zero, and even if I didn't know that, I could put a zero in and say, how far is zero from zero? zero times negative three, zero. Anything times zero is zero. I know my slope's gonna be positive on the left side, right? So I know it's gonna be positive. So I know it's down three, left three. Remember, down three, left three, that's a positive three. But I have to go down because it opens down. And on the right side, I know it's gonna be negative. So I go down three, right three. And that is a much quicker way to graph the absolute value. Now we're going to answer the questions. What is the slope on the left side? Three. What is the slope on the right side? Negative three. What is the vertex? Zero, zero. That's the turning point. What's the domain? Domain is always all real numbers when we have absolute values like this. You don't learn about the other ones until algebra two. 
what is, is the graph reflected over the excess uh, x axis? Yes, it is, because a is less than 0. a was negative 3. Is it vertically stretched or compressed? Stretched, because a was greater than 1. And that's usually, say, the absolute value of a. What is the axis of symmetry? x equals 0. And what is the range? y is less than or equal to 0. And that is how you do it. Now, the other thing you're going to have to know for the homework is they're going to ask you about um, finding the slope of an absolute value over a specific interval. So let's just go over that right here. If I, ha if I give you a picture of this and I said, hey, between the interval of negative 5 and negative 2, can't see that, let me move it over. Between this interval, notice it's an x, so it's asking between negative, let me get my highlighter, between negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and negative 5, what is the slope of that absolute value? Well, we know it's on the left side. Even if we don't see it, the slope on the left side is, we already said it, right? It's 3. So if they asked us for that interval, we'd say, oh, well, the slope is 3, or the rate of change. Sometimes they'll ask you about the rate of change. If they asked us for an interval anywhere over here, even if it was between 10 and 20, we would know that the slope was negative 3, because doesn't, the slope doesn't change just because you're way over there. Remember, these are uh, piecewise function of two lines, and the, the line always has a constant rate of change. So that's the other thing you'll have to know. So you just have to kind of figure out, is it on the left side or the right side? And then it's whatever that slope is. So if the interval is over here, it's going to be 3. If the interval is over here, it's going to be negative 3. So that's the last thing you need to know to do your homework. Good luck with that. M squared signing out.